Republicans have narrowly won back the House of Representatives, but they'll have to navigate the next two years with a very small majority, which will likely cause chaos and empower fringe extremists like Marjorie Taylor Greene. And all of that will be happening as Donald Trump tears the party further apart with his presidential bid. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Today was a big day on Capitol Hill. Outgoing House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who has made history as the first woman to lead the chamber, announced that she would not seek re-election to a leadership position in the next Congress. In her speech, she noted how many presidents she has worked with across party lines, although she left out one notable name. It's been my privilege to play a part in forging extraordinary progress for the American people. I have enjoyed working with three presidents achieving historic investments in clean energy with President George Bush. <laughs> Transformative health care reform with President Barack Obama. <laughs> and, forging, and forging the future from infrastructure to health care to climate action with President Joe Biden. <laughs> Say what you will about Nancy Pelosi, but she knows what she's doing. The worst. <laughs> thing you can do to Donald Trump is not say anything about Donald Trump. The man <laughs> desperately craves attention. He'd rather you call him a disgusting, degenerate criminal moron than not say his name. And I'm sure he watched that speech, since he's always watching TV. Right now, he's probably at home spinning out, saying, wait a second, does Nancy not like me? <laughs> what did I ever do to her? Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Oh, and there was that. Oh, <laughs> that was a bad one. Compare Pelosi's farewell address to Trump's announcement that he's running for president for a third time, which was full of lies and mangled sentences and weird tangents. Trump's speech has also sparked yet another round of infighting and recriminations among Republicans, given that Trump has repeatedly tanked the party. He did in 2018, 2020, and then again in last week's midterms. And yet Trump obviously does not care. On Tuesday, he announced his intention to take back the corridors of power. Although, as usual, he tripped up on the word, and then because he was too embarrassed to correct himself, repeated it a bunch of times to try to save face, which only made it worse. This is our country, our government, and the corridors of power, or our, they're our corridors. They're not their corridors. These are our corridors. <laughs> and we are coming to take those corridors back. Can I, can I just pitch you something? Try halls. <laughs> halls of power. So clearly what happened here is he stumbled on the word corridors once and then said it like eight more times to try and recover, which is not how you do it. It's like if you called someone the wrong name during sex and then just kept saying it in hopes that they would choose to legally chain it. <laughs> Lisa, I mean, you're not a Lisa, but you look like a Lisa. And Lisa, what a name. Mona Lisa, Lisa Simpson. Even you have to admit it's better than your real name, not Lisa. He says the word so many times that, like, he's in an episode of Seinfeld where Kramer tells Jerry about his plan to turn his entire apartment into a series of hallways. One word, Jerry, corridors. <laughs> you got corridors here, corridors there, it's all corridors. They finally did it, Jerry, they took away my corridor. Well, you'll never guess who took a trip down my corridor. <laughs> now that's how you enter a corridor. <laughs> Keep a... Keep an eye out for my new one-man show, Minefeld. <laughs> When's it open? It's closed. It hasn't even opened yet. Can they do that? Well, why didn't they call me? Oh, they thought I'd do the voices on the phone? <laughs> anyway, despite Trump's drag on the GOP in the midterms, it looks like House Republicans have crawled across the finish line and eked out a narrow majority in the House, potentially making GOP leader Kevin McCarthy, the next speaker. Now, McCarthy will have a very small margin of error to work with, given that Republicans will only have a few more votes than Democrats. That probably means he won't be able to get much done, although McCarthy dismissed the notion that the size of his majority will matter. What was our mission? To win the majority, to stop Biden's agenda, and fire Nancy Pelosi. All of that is accomplished. Remember in the House, they don't give gavels out by small, medium, and large. They just give you the gavel. Maybe they don't give out gavels in small, medium, and large, but they should. If you botch an election that badly but still manage to eke out a narrow win, you should be forced to call the House into section with a tiny little gavel the size of a pen. <laughs> also, don't give Donald Trump any ideas, because you know as soon as he heard McCarthy say that, Trump asked his team to get him a giant gavel. I don't even... 
need to run because I've got the biggest gavel, and the guy who shows up with the biggest gavel, he gets to be in charge, and you know what they say about guys with gavels, right? Guys with big gavels. We all know what they say, don't they? They also have big corridors. <laughs> Plus, if Trump had a big gavel, he could play whack-a-mole with his lawyers. Boss! I got an idea! Oh! You could have just said no, boss. Back of the hole. Anyway, McCarthy's right about one thing. He may not be able to pass much of any legislation with such a slim majority, but House Republicans will gain subpoena power, along with the ability to run committees and conduct investigations. In fact, they've already announced their intentions to conduct nonsense investigations into stuff like Hunter Biden's laptop. Cartoon character lunatics like Marjorie Taylor Greene might even have the power to conduct oversight over the Biden administration, which Green has repeatedly said she would do aggressively. I'm looking forward to Republicans taking back control in the House. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to serving on committees. Yeah. Here's what you can expect from Republicans. We will be investigating and holding people accountable. There's a lot of traitors and criminals that need to be held accountable. First of all, I wouldn't trust anyone to conduct investigations whose fashion style is Unabomber chic. Also, <laughs> this is why McCarthy's majority is likely to be such a show. He has to answer to crazies like Green, who in turn answer to Trump in order to wield power because he has such a slim majority. At any moment, a few rogue Republicans could threaten to take him down by withholding their votes if they don't get what they want. You can't function in a job like that. Like, for example, here at this job, I don't have to keep everyone who works for me happy all the time which is great because if I did, I'd be constantly doling out favors to everyone, like letting Wally interrupt the show to plug his cue card business. Seth, the holidays are right around the corner. So if you're looking for a unique gift for that special loved one in your life, just go to cue cards by- Stop it! <laughs> See, I don't need to let him finish. Anyway, if you're looking for a unique gift for that special loved one in your life, just go to cuecardsbywally.com. Wait a second, damn it! <laughs> did you write that on the cards without my permission? Did I? Oops. <laughs> You're my Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> <laughs> Can we edit out the long trailing giggle of... <laughs> we call that sound effect Wally's Delight. <laughs> Anyway, these are the kinds of bozos Trump surrounds himself with, and now they will have a very tenuous hold on power in the House, which is bad for everyone, including Republicans themselves, because Trump's hand-picked slate of election denier candidates performed horribly in last week's midterms, especially compared to other more traditional Republicans. Voters thoroughly rejected Trumpism and the MAGA movement and made clear they want a competent government that will preserve American democracy. That's why Republicans are also nervous about Georgia, where Trump-backed Senate candidate Herschel Walker finished second and will head to a runoff against incumbent Raphael Warnock. And Walker is not helping himself, as evidenced by this incredibly bizarre and completely real clip from a rally yesterday where Walker told an inscrutable story about watching a movie about vampires and werewolves on TV. See if you can follow, best of luck to you, any of this. You ever watch a stupid movie late at night, hoping it's gonna get better, don't get better, but you keep watching it anyway? Because the other night, the other night I was watching this movie, I was watching this movie called Fright Night, Freak Night, or some type of night, but it was about vampires. I don't know if you know vampires are some cool people, are they not? But I'm gonna tell you something that I found out. A werewolf can kill a vampire, did you know that? I never knew that, so I didn't want to be a vampire anymore, I wanted to be a werewolf. But then anyway, as I'm watching this movie, and then you can tell how stupid it is, because it's one in the morning. So I'm watching my TV, are these kids watching their TV, or a vampire kill on their TV? So you know it's kind of stupid, but I'm still watching though. As I'm watching this show, what was funny, these kids had a vampire in their attic at their house. So they were watching their TV. Now I'm watching my TV, as they're watching their TV, or they see the vampire killer on their TV. So they win this contest to bring this actor. Now y'all gotta stay with me. Oh, it's way, <laughs> way too late to stay with you, friend. That was by far the worst Rotten Tomato synopsis I've ever heard. You sound like an eight-year-old who ate too much sugar on Halloween and stayed up watching TV way past the bedtime. Did you know that werewolves can kill vampires? I didn't know that, so I don't want to be a vampire anymore. I want to be a werewolf. And also, did you know that the human head weighs eight pounds? <laughs> All I caught in that story was the sentence, and let me make sure I'm reading this verbatim so I can be fair and accurate to the 
potential future United States Senator from Georgia. <clears throat> I don't know if you know, vampires are cool people, are they not? <laughs> Can you imagine someone actually asking that question during a hearing in the Senate chamber? The chair recognizes the senator from Georgia while also reminding him that this hearing is about agriculture and that our witness is an expert on grain, not vampires. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh -huh. Mr. Secretary, before I get to the issue of farm subsidies, I have one question for you. Vampires are cool people, are they not? <laughs> I yield the rest of my time. <laughs> also, let me just say, I did know that, okay? Let's be honest, vampires are kick-ass people. There's no debate about that. Some of my best friends are vampires. <laughs> Why do you think I look older every year, but Colin Joe still looks like this? <laughs> he is 238 years old. Not only did he just buy an old Staten Island ferry, he was on the inaugural journey. <laughs> now you're for it all. If you were at all worried that the story just abruptly ended there and Walker moved on to something that made more sense, you know, to the voters of Georgia. <laughs> rest assured, he kept going. And the rest of it was just as bizarre. In fact, this story about vampires, or whatever, was so long, the only way for us to show it to you is through a time lapse. Bring this actor who's a vampire killer from that TV to get rid of this real life vampire in that act. You gotta have a state and gotta have a thing to, to kill him in the heart. And you got a necklace of garlic, cause that worked. I don't know what it does, but it worked. You gotta have a cross, cause it burned, I know that worked. They walked upstairs and this vampire looking real good in this black suit. He floated in front of the ceiling looking good and cool. And I'm thinking, whoa, they better get out of that house. As they jumped behind that hero, the guy jumped in front of him with this holy water, threw it on the vampire forehead. He covered his eye. He took the cross, he put it on the vampire forehead. And the vampire didn't even do anything. He said, that don't work. And that's the way it is in our life. It doesn't even work. I think Herschel Walker's plan to combat inflation might be that no one in Georgia will need to pay for streaming services anymore because he'll just tell you the plots of movies and TV shows. Now, there are no actual squids in Squid Game, but that doesn't mean these people don't have some serious problems. <laughs> Trump and his movement were clearly a major drag on the GOP in last week's midterms, which gave Republicans an incredibly narrow majority in the House that will probably be led in large part by fringe extremists looking to cause chaos. And who knows, in a few weeks, they might even be joined by Herschel Walker, who, if he gets to the Senate, will be walking around looking for werewolves and vampires hiding in all the... Carters. <laughs> this has been Closer Life.